A lot of people who visit here do what are called the tours. There's, there's three different tours. There's the small tour, the big tour, and the Angkor tour. Now this temple, look at it, it's magnificent, it's very nice, is not on any of those tours. And as you can see, that means it's completely deserted. The only other person here is Toby, who's over there, miles away. You can hardly even see him. There he is. Yeah, if you, if you do it yourself, come here on a bicycle, or if you're gonna rent a motorbike, be safe, wear a helmet. Um, there's, there's, there's more that you can see that other people don't go to. This is the second time today that we've been pretty much completely on our own. The first time being when we wandered off and found those security guards having a break at one of the smaller temples, which we affectionately called the Khmer King's Summer House because it was just lovely. It was right on the river. We said there's a 100% chance that at some point in the last 9,000 years, someone's been sat here chilling out, having a lovely day, and then a crocodile has come out of the river because it must have happened. It's been a thousand years. But just look at this. It's incredible. What a lovely place. This temple that we're at now was built earlier than Angkor Wat. It was built in the 10th century, not the, let me think, that would be the 12th. Um, yeah, this is 10th century. So this is 1,100 years old at least. And it's still looking pretty dang good. We're gonna go have a look around closer soon. Oh God, this is scary. No, it's not, it's fine. Shut up, you're not a puss. That was exceedingly pretty. However, the clouds kind of uh, stopped. You know, we wanted we wanted the big ball of light coming over the over the temple, but it didn't happen. But I've got another day left on my three-day ticket. Sixty-two bucks it was, just in case you're planning on coming. And we'll try again on the next day. That shackle was too long, wasn't it? I think I'll keep doing it until it's funny again. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Beautiful temple. Let's go see it. Me and Toby are currently inside Angkor Wat Temple, which is the namesake of the complex because it's the, uh, the largest one. It wasn't the earliest one, because we went to one that was 10th century yesterday. This one was started construction in 1122 and took 28 years to finish. It was originally constructed as a Hindu temple um, and later changed to Buddhism. You might think that that would take 300 to 400 years and gigantic cultural shifts. However, it didn't. It was sort of on the whim of the king. The king changed his religion to Buddhism because there was influences coming in from uh, other areas just outside of his kingdom. And he decided to change to Buddhism, change this temple to a Buddhist temple, which means that the entrance to this temple is one of the very few Buddhist temples that faces west rather than, where did you, you said south? The majority of Buddhist temples head south, but this one doesn't. Scholars apparently disagree on why, but to me it seems to make sense that it wasn't important when they constructed it, because it was Hindu. It's gorgeous. It's been, it's been an early rise, so we need to choose a restaurant for some coffee and some munch. Morning. Do you want a yeah, we'll come with you. You were first. You. Let's go. <laughs> oh, there's puppies playing over there. Oh, that's so cute. I miss my dog. Thank you. Hot Hot on. <laughs> Cambodia? Uh, only one week. I got some trousers yesterday because uh, you have to wear long trousers here and I did not try them on and they are incredibly tight. So I've just found out that Khmer coffee is very similar to Canarian coffee because we've got a pot of condensed milk here for that. So it's like a leche leche, very nice. But I suppose it's just single leche, dolce leche, that's it. And my iced coffee looks incredible. For scale, here's my hand. Christ.
I'm loving your hide the pain face. It's really good. It's very impressive. It's very good, but I don't think we can play. We have we have the music talent of a, a damp ostrich. I mean, I can play that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Ah. I'm sorry, man. I'm really I'm bad at music. Thank you. I hope you have a good day. <laughs> I'm so glad I could talk to you. That was fun. I'm pure creeping on this guy, stroking a cat right now. It's cute though. This is definitely not a fact that Toby told me yesterday. The largest religious complex in the world. And it is four times bigger than the town of CM Reap. Whoa. No. Oh. I feel sick. <laughs> I was just... I was wondering how high we are and about to like go and look down here um, and I put my foot in this hole and it felt like I fell. <laughs> it's like, oh man, it's pretty high already. As, um, as far as me and Toby can figure, there's, there's a no hat sign and some other stuff that you can't take up these steps. But I think that the no hat is um, for religious reasons because we were told if we were to go and talk to monks and go into the monastery, we should... Um, remove our hats because it's a politeness thing here. These steps are crazy steep and I'm kind of worried about my long trousers that are going to mess it up. I'm going to try and make it clear how steep this is, but it's kind of difficult. I think the wooden steps here with the handrails are for the tourist benefit and also to protect the original stairs there. They're in, they're in good nick. You could walk up them, but obviously with hundreds of thousands of tourists coming by every month, you, um, you don't want to damage them. It's probably bad enough having to build the structures on top of them to get up here. Oh, me and Toby have done 40K on bikes two days ago, so that was quite a lot of effort. It's hard to know where to point the camera because everything's so pretty. <laughs> I need to call Jackie and make sure she's not pregnant because uh, that was a dad joke. Okay, this is the kind of crazy disrespectful stuff that you should not do when you're in someone else's country and someone else's holy site. Like, I'm reasonably sure that's an English football club. I don't know a lot about it, but God damn it. That's just, don't do that. I'm sure that some of those people have probably grown up and realized that that's an awful thing to do now. Can you believe they've done that? Ah. Really? Yeah, and here. How brain dead have you got to be? Even a little bit stupid, they're right, their own country, Malaysia. Yeah. Well, we're not blaming, I, I think I just saw a football team from England, so there's, <laughs> there's idiots from there too. Literally, someone's written Dougie Mackey from Scotland. It looks like he was gonna write Dundee and then was like, oh, no one knows where Dundee's where Dundee is up at Scotland. That's awful. I'm trying to work out how these are supported. Yeah, what do you think? I really can't work that out. Yeah, that kind of slots in. Ah, uh, do you think they're like, maybe they're carved like triangles at the end mm -hmm. and yeah. like they kind of lock in? Yeah, this is probably, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is probably like... Ah. Cool. That, I think, is the same rock because there's no way that could just be supported. I think that was all been carved out of one piece, right? Must have been. You use all the cement you lag and ain't going to stay up there. You could really hurt yourself falling off of some bits here. Like, that's... Yeah. I'm not saying they should sanitize it. I'm just saying, yeah, could. According to Toby, this is the tallest tower at around 67 meters. <laughs> what? 
65. I thought you were going, you're doing a great job. That's really good. 65 meters from the base of the temple. We're already halfway up, coming up those steep stairs. But the detail on it is still absolutely incredible. It's lasted so long. It's made of this soft sandstone. It's really different to the stones that we're kind of standing on right now. You feel these are more solid. That's what it feels like underfoot. It's very, very solid. Whereas the sandstone there is just incredibly soft, which makes it super easy for the craftsman 900 years ago, 950 years ago, to carve up and get those intricate details into the rock. And it's just astounding that the, the details have lasted this long outside in crazy conditions. I mean, the sun today is incredibly hot. The sun yesterday was incredibly hot. And during the rainy season, it rains consistently for around four months out of the year. And the details are still absolutely perfect. Me and Toby were just saying, this is, uh, if we were the king, we would choose this spot for the breakfast pack here, because, yeah, good view. It's the first worker I've seen working on the kind of construction bits. Oh my God. I don't know why I'm trying to film this, because it's actually freaking me out just going down. And... Were you a bit scared of heights? No, but this is scary because it's lethal. You know what I mean? You don't need to be scared of heights to be scared of this. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to film this. This is horrible. Oh, don't get jelly legs, man. This is the only way down. I will, uh, I'll regale the viewers with the story of why this probably scares me so much. When I was a kid, uh, I had two best friends, Gareth and Bradley, and they had a big tree house that was pretty high up. Probably wasn't that high up, but I was a kid. Uh, so it was really high, felt about as high as this actually. Oh, it's making my legs shake. And my shoelace is untied. Um, and I went up the treehouse, had a great time, and then realized that I couldn't get back down. And their big dad, Mick, who's a big, big fella, big rugby guy, had to come and carry me down, carry me down by the waistband. And it was the scariest thing that had happened to me at that point, when I was like four years old. And there's been multiple other times that I have got up on really high things and not been able to get down. So that's a success. Yay! <laughs> it doesn't look that steep on camera. I promise I'm not this much of a puss, but that was, it's very steep. It's just like you said, I'm not afraid of heights, but it's like you're aware that if you trip, you're gonna be hospitalized at best. Like if you slip, you are in trouble. These monkeys are so close. Oh, he'll take, she'll take a donut. Oh yeah, yeah, you want to make sure the other ones don't see it. Oh, hello. No, that's not food. No, 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 bring it back. He's getting you a donut. <laughs> I took it so fast. Oh, is chocolate all right for them to have? Yeah, of course they are. They're, they're, yeah. They've got a digestive system like us, right? Oh, you're in trouble now. You better get your back quick. <laughs> he doesn't want to shake your hand. He's checking out my bag. <laughs> it's like, hmm, that guy had a donut in his. Maybe this guy's got donuts. Eat that quick. He is loving that. It's gonna take your whole bag. Uh... Oh, he's getting mad with you. Normally, in touristy places, when the monkeys get that close, they're just hyper aggressive and you can't have a nice moment with them, but they're really calm. They're Cambodian monkeys. Even the monkeys are chill and polite, yeah. Even that, he wasn't like, he didn't go screeching at you. He would just let you know, like, I'm not happy with that. I want to have a look in your bag, please. It was like a little, uh, yeah, not yeah. like a going crazy. I'm not quite sure why we don't need to for Anchor Wat. Maybe because it's so busy and they've kind of bent the rules a little bit. But here um, at this one, which is not far, I think we're, are we the west side? No. 
and maybe the south side. Um, you have to remove your shoes before going in, which is a Cambodian custom too. Like if I go in the office at the hostel, you have to take your shoes off. It's a respect thing, just a little. So we're very safe. Yeah, yeah. Monkeys only bite once a month and we only fall down the stairs back in the past. Not yeah, now. I'm yeah. really surprised though. Maybe because it's so steep, people pay more attention and they're like more careful yeah, coming down. Yeah, yeah, that must be it. I know there's a lot of old people and some of them are heavy yeah. or yeah, maybe. <laughs> but not often. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. Have a nice day. You too. Are you from CMB? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I born in CMB. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, good place. Good, good place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We stay here uh, quite a long time. Yeah, really like about one month. Just the town is so sweet. Everyone here is so friendly and oh, nice. Yes. Yeah, I really yes. like it. Our culture like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We notice. When we <laughs> face to face like you, we just only smile. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's a really nice place to be. Yeah. I've noticed one thing that impressed me a lot. That's everywhere when it's around mm -hmm. when, when people park their motors, yeah. motorbikes, with helmet. Yeah, and they walk away, and then they come back, and it's there. Yeah, no, yeah, nobody yeah. Take it. You know, in our countries. Yeah, if I leave, if I leave my helmet near my bike in How London, you come by, yeah? it would be ten minutes, and yeah. someone would take the, yeah, yeah, the helmet yeah, 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 yeah. and maybe the bike too. Yeah. So that's very good for Cambodia. Maybe, yeah. maybe you don't know it because you you live here every day, you don't see it. But we will come from outside. We, we appreciate it. it. Feels safer and nicer yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You can buy a bike, but for buy, eh? We can buy a bicycle. Bike, bike yeah, yeah, we cycled. Yeah. That but was nice. You buy the car or you ride a bike? Bicycle. bicycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay fit, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Noi, yeah. Noi. Noi, Jack. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is this where you come for your break? Ah. Uh, when you're working, do you come here just to relax yeah. for the, yeah, for 15? <laughs> it's a nice spot, it's That's very nice. pretty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> I think he was just laughing because he knows that you're poking at a snake and he's like, uh, that guy cares about snakes. I think he just escaped like further down towards those three rocks there. No, like them for him. So we just finished poking around for the snake. We are still in the anchor Wat walls, which are just behind me. But look at all these people. Literally, you just walk off the beaten track a tiny bit and we're, we're allowed to be here because we've just been chatting with some security guys that were on their break and there's no one here. It's lovely. It's very peaceful. But you do have to look out for snakes, which we've just learned because I nearly stepped on one and it fell off. Just look at this. It's incredible. What a lovely place. I don't know if you can really get a sense of scale here, but it is still, nearly fell again, it is still absolutely massive. It is huge. Let's see if I can set the camera down somewhere and show you quite how big it is. There's a giant pit here. I don't know what the pit's for. Looks a bit ominous. It is massive. It's huge. Whoa. And it looks completely unrestored too. It's very, yeah, no, it is. There's no restoration done to this one. And there's no sign saying that we can't climb the stairs. So I'm now just gonna show you all the cobwebs that we've seen at the bottom of this temple. It's the whole and worryingly, no spiders. Where are they? We don't know. They look like um, funnel webs, which I only know from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. But if I can get real close, you see here, uh, like a hole. I just went like halfway up and then was like, hmm, I should probably come down because I don't know how hard it's going to be. It's doable, but I kind of came down on my ass, which I have no shame in that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to climb it again? Yes. Okay. 
I didn't go all the way up. I want to see what's in the room. And I'm being a dumbass and I'm going to try and film it. So I'm going to climb it with one hand. And as previously explained, it's more like a ladder than stairs. Oh my God. I'm going to climb after you get to a safe bit. Cause if you fall, I don't want you to kill me too. <laughs> I do too, but I'm, uh, I'm a dumbass. So Toby just said I should use both hands. He is absolutely correct. If you have two hands, you should use two hands to climb this. And I will be on the way down, most definitely. But we gotta do it for the footage. Should probably have worn my helmet. I'm kind of using my left hand as I'm filming here. A little bit. Don't look down. But then you have to look down when you go down. That's the problem. Oh God, Fuck, this is scary. No, it's not, it's fine. Shut up, you're not a puss. Get up. It's only scary as doing a ladder at work. Oh my God, oh that was scary. Ooh. You didn't find that scary at all, did you? Fair enough, thank you, that's very complimentary. A mystical before the Khmer Empire king, this was built. Um, and the, it was something about like the scriptures that were written are some of the oldest ancient Khmer that they have, that they found here. Um, and it was about him being born of himself. So like he wasn't born, he was just Oh, here, Mr. Pre-Khmer King slash God. Um, and he took a wife, which was this mystical nymph lady. And they put a nice statue in. I'm really glad we came up here. I'm terrified about getting down. I'm gonna stop thinking about it. Huh? We both have. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, on my ass. Oh, this is the scripture. So that's the ancient Khmer story about the mystical king. Right, um, I'm not gonna look at the screen while I film what I have to go down. Because it's sketchy as fuck. I'm just gonna get the angle right. I swore, I'm trying not to swear on YouTube. It's really hard. Uh, yeah, so. I'm just gonna get a shot how steep it is. And I'm not gonna look at the screen. Don't look at it. Ah, <sighs> terrific. Right, okay, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. So at this point, obviously, Toby has told me to use two hands to get down the steps here, and they are so steep that I didn't think filming was a very good idea because one wrong step, and honestly, it would be 50-50 if you would be alive by the time you got to the bottom. But fortunately for you, viewers at home, my phone miraculously started recording while it was in my pocket. So here's a short assortment of clips of how scared I was <laughs> shuffling my way down these stairs slash ladder on my ass. I think I just heard my camera turn. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Feels like the kind of thing you could do with a rope for it, doesn't it? Nah, don't think about that, dude. We got this. No shame in fear. It's a sensible fear. Oh. You're not even that high anymore, dude. Even if you fell, you'd be fine. Cool. <sighs> yep, you're fine. <sighs> no. Yeah, you got it. Nah, I don't have a fear of heights. I have a healthy fear of death. But you're fine now, even if you fall. You're all good. And you're not gonna fall, because it's just fing stairs, dude. That was, without a doubt, the scariest thing I have done for quite some time. Uh, and I'm not afraid to admit that. That was really scary. Um, Toby asked earlier if I had a fear of heights. I don't think so. I think I just have a fear of things that can kill me. Because a fall from the top of that would kill you. 
camera's not even steady. I'm shaking, man. It feels good to be down, and I'm glad I went up. That was a high risk, high reward. Good stuff. If I did it again, I think I'd take a rope and I'd feel a lot more comfortable. Look at this, Toby's gonna be the most chill person about it ever. How, how was that? <laughs> it was good. <clears throat> yeah, it was all right. Just uh, I'm happy it wasn't uh, wet, rainy, so it wasn't wet. Oh yeah, imagine if you got to the top and then it rained. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it is. I think we're probably the only people to come here today who are gonna climb and come down that. Probably. I think Could that's be. worth one of these. Yeah, definitely. Good job, mate. I've asked these ladies very politely if they allow me to film, and they said yes, so that's very sweet of them. <laughs> and just watching them, they keep all of the temples nice and clean and make sure that it looks lovely for visitors and locals alike. And they're very nice ladies. Arkun, Arkun today, Nihai. Not a whole lot of children. I think it's too much. We saw, I actually saw a Scouse couple um, the other day when we came at Taprom, but I think it would just be too exhausting for them. It's a bit much, isn't it? And kids don't, kids don't really get it. They don't appreciate as much as they, yeah, they just don't really get it, I don't think. Not many. I think, they'd, I think they'd find it pretty boring. We're at the Bayun now. It's the correct name, isn't it? The Bayun? Yep. Yeah. It's not referred to as a temple. Um, we did just read the blurb about it, but it was a little bit confusing. It was talking about um, a snake god and it's circled around the temple. And that's why there's five entrances or something. It's kind of it's a bit of a complicated myth. But um, there's not much restoration in this one, which is quite nice. We can see the original stuff a bit more. Cool. Toby was just saying as well, he spoke to someone who said we were on about the holes in all of the rocks. Um, can't really see any right now. Hold on. They are in almost all of them. There we go. You can see some holes behind me here. Um, just up there in all the rocks. And we were debating what they were, but they're for wooden rods to go in when you're carrying the, the stones. So you put the wooden rods in, tie the ropes in a special way that makes sure that the rods stay in. And it helps you carry the, carry the rocks and put them into place. However, Toby was talking to someone who said there is some uh, evidence of Khmer Rouge bullet holes from the, um, the difficult times around 50 years ago that this country went through. I haven't seen any though. That might be what was throwing us off because we kind of thought that might be what it was, but there's too many holes. So maybe they just get swallowed up by the, the carrying holes. If you're ever wondering why Toby is so calm, he's kind of cheating. He's a big fan of local Khmer herbs. If you, um, if you catch my drift, you're probably fine with it. And if you don't, don't worry about it. The, the Bayun is quite important. The carvings depict a lot of different situations, uh, such as sort of sick women and market sellers. Here we have people riding on an elephant in what looks like going into war. Quite a few elephant ones, actually. And this temple gives you the most complete picture of what Khmer life was like at the time. And there's even um, some evidence of cultural mixing all that time ago as there's um, sculptures depicting Chinese women coming over and selling fish and that kind of thing. So yeah, this, this temple helped to paint the most accurate picture of life at the time, thanks to the sculptures in the walls. Toby's just pointed out with these statues that all of them are smiling. And after speaking to our friend, was it Noya? No, no. Noya. I think his name was Noya, the security man. Yeah. After speaking to our friend about how happy Khmer people are and welcoming, it's quite unsurprising that all of the statues here are smiling. We've just been kind of comparing religious 
artifacts and stuff and saying that if you uh, ever see a picture of Jesus, he's never grinning. So maybe that has quite a lot to do with how the culture around it grows to be either happy or a little stoic. That did actually, I have some GoPro footage of that happening when it, it chucked its way, it chucked it down on the way back from here and the, the tuk-tuk driver, he did, he had like some, uh, like a big yellow anorak and put that on. We're still at Bayun, we've just stumbled across um, a Buddhist ceremony and the, the tour guide there hopefully let us know that it's a ceremony for the rich giving to the poor, which is very nice. I'm trying to kind of keep my distance and be respectful because I don't want to upset anyone by filming a little bit. It looks very peaceful. Yeah. So what is your name? Church. Church? Yeah. Jack. Yeah, nice to meet you. So I've just met Judge. Um, we're still just outside Bayon Temple. And Judge, do you live here? Yeah, I came to small and shop in here. I came to live in here. Yeah. I sell and the uh, drink for us and the small shop in here. Yeah. Yeah. I have and uh, many many tourists. I came to to tell from and uh, like something to drink in here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I came to sell in here. Yeah. Um. Do you like to live here in yeah. Bayun? Yeah. But not in Siem Reap? Yeah. Oh, no. No? no. You like it here? Yeah, like yeah. it here. Yeah. It does well? Yeah, my shop have and the family in here. Yeah. yeah. And is it good? Do you have yeah. enough, uh, yeah, enough, enough people like us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah come and buy drink. Yeah, yeah. Ah, good. Yeah. Okay. Do you think, are you, are you happy? Not happy. No? Not happy? No. Oh, that sucks. I can to stay live and here or here. 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 Yeah. What would you do if you could yeah. do anything? During this part of the interview, there's a little bit of difficulty due to the language barrier. I would like to say that Judge's English is fantastic for someone who probably doesn't have a massive amount of education in his past. However, the point he's trying to get across here is that if he could do anything, all he wants in the world is to sell more at his shop to support his family better. The monks nearby are listed in Lonely Planet and it would be his dream to be listed in Lonely Planet to drive more people to his store. So what I'm gonna do is put the exact location of his shop here. I, I have never added a location to Google before. However, I've done my very best to help Judge out and I have added the location of his shop next to my own temple. It's just there. And obviously, there's a couple of stalls there. But go and have a look for Chudge. You know what the main man looks like, so go find him and buy yourself a Coke at least. He was just an absolutely lovely person. He was very short on money and in fact explained later that the monks nearby do help him with a little extra food for his family as time goes on. And the pigs that you're about to see, he looks after them for on behalf of the monks as a sort of exchange for some extra food for his family. So if you do go and visit the complex, please do go and visit church because he was an absolute sweetheart and he can teach you how to make these incredible straw roses. Hmm. Lonely planet, yeah. yeah. But for me, not. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. I think I'm gonna need to ask. It's very nice of Chush to bring us here. I feel a bit bad filming. I feel like I should ask. Is this okay? It is quite dark in here. I've just switched cameras so it will pick it up a bit better. I don't think the dog's keen on us being here. Not <laughs> problem. Chush. Yeah. But he's just, he's checking that we're safe, I think. It's the opposite to Lenny, who's not keen on foreigners, I think. <laughs> yeah, don't be mad at me. Well, that was fascinating. That was really nice. Trish is our unofficial guide now. Yeah. A little bit of guide. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. 
I didn't actually notice that on the way down. And the lady, who is the lady? Who is this? A uh, lady from Mendes, uh and the man in here. Uh, I see. Yeah. I understand. Uh, from the, and the flower, you can just see it. Oh, so she helps? Yeah. Ah. I think if I'm understanding this right, this is um, sort of a... And this this is to help with yeah. the baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. So it's depicting some sort of help with fertility or help with the pain. Oh, this flower? Yeah, flower. Oh, so this, the flower that she's pulling down here is to help with the pain in pregnancy. And there's some of the flowers just here. Just on this tree. They're very pretty. Do you, um, do you eat the flower? Is that what it's for? No. No? Oh, oh the monkeys eat them. Ah. But it helps with ladies. Yeah, this. yeah, they yeah, have, 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 he can do like this from uh, this. Yes. And, uh, it, uh, Oh, you grind it and you rub it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you grind the leaves, you rub them on your, 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 your tummy when you're pregnant. It makes you feel better. Oh, cool. The ne what's the, the name of the flower? Rientnum. Rientnum. Yeah. I get it right? Rientnum. Yeah. There we go. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, Baby like, pain. Like a... Oh, like tea. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah, cool. <laughs> I feel bad taking it. Cool. It looks like your flower. Yeah, the one you make. Yeah. <laughs> so Church is just going to show me how he makes these lovely flowers that he's just given me and Toby one of. Ah, and you melt the final petal to it. And that's the final product. And then the straws have been pinched. But you slot that in. And you get these. And we thought, sitting from a distance, we thought they were real flowers. They're really quite pretty. And we've got some beehive here that's come off one of the trees. Um, like the ones at Tafrom that we saw. Wow, beautiful. That's great. Well done. Cool. We have the, the three day. Yeah. Yeah. And we use two. So another day I'll come by and I'll say I'll say hello. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the flower. I want to shake your hand. I'm gonna put it in this flower. Josh, nice to meet you. Arkun Chirai. Say hi. Cambodia. No, I try. <laughs> Have a good day. Nice to meet you. Two together. Yeah. See you soon, Josh. Say hi. Bye, Josh. As myself and Toby rode off after another beautiful day at the temples, I couldn't help but think about Josh almost on the way home. His hospitality, his helpfulness in showing us the surrounding area around the store and the fact that regardless that his financial situation was clearly not the best, he gifted myself and Toby those flowers and didn't ask for any money in return. As we were leaving, our bill came to around $2.50, but we decided to overpay and gave him 10 because it only seemed fair when he hadn't asked for any extra money, regardless of his situation. Uh, once again, another example of how kind and welcoming Cambodian people are to people visiting their country and wanting to enjoy their cultural heritage and it was just a lovely way to end the day at the temples. 
I would like to mention here that as this is still a very small channel, only launched around a month ago, I do respond to every comment, every like that is put on a video, I do notice. I respond to every comment and every subscriber, obviously, really makes my day at this point. So if you're feeling charitable and you want to do any of those things, or even ask questions about visiting the temples, please pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. I always aim to get back to any comments within 24 hours. Thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you return and watch another.